Standing on the promises of Christ, my King. Through eternal ages, let His praises sing. Glory in the eyes, I will shout and sing. For I am standing on the promises of God. Stand on the promises. Stand on the promises. I am standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Stand on the promises. Stand on the promises. Standing on the promises that can not fail when the howling storms of doubt and fears ascend. By the living word of God, I shall prevail, for I am standing on the promises of God. Oh, standing, I'm standing, stand, and standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love, strong corn, overcoming daily with the spirit swarm. Standing on the promises of God, I am standing, I'm standing, I'm standing, I'm standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing. You know I can't sing. <laughs> All right, we need to thank the duet here, um, Elder Ferguson, um, Pastor Roy Bell. Right now, we're going to move into our um, announcements, so we want you to be very attentive. Um, it may be for you. First of all, personal ministries. Personal ministries would like to remind all parents and youths of the Festival of Young Preachers under the theme, Is God Still Relevant in This Time? This event takes place on April 27, 2024. We have three categories, ages 7 to 12, then 13 to 18, and 19 to 25. If you want to register, you could see me or see any member of the personal ministries team. On the same note, we'd like to again announce and remind you of the Seniors and No Believers Banquet happening on July 14th at the Marriott Stamford um, Hotel. So we have a few people that are already interested. We're asking that if you so desire, it's a beautiful thing. I've been there several times. It's really, really nice. And it's only if more than 10, $70. So see me afterwards if you're interested or you don't want to go, sponsor somebody, okay? A senior or a new believer or any person at all. And seniors begin at 55 years old, okay? Not 65, 55. Okay, they step it down for me. Okay, today is the day for our Do More in 24, it's a conference-wide symposium. But today, it is focused here in Bronx, Manhattan. So this church is going to be hosting the Do More in 24. Today, we're going to have our um, Pastor um, Walton Rose. And in the afternoon, we're going to have workshops. We have three sessions. So we are asking you, please stay back for the sessions this afternoon. What we are doing is equipping you, giving you tools so you could witness for Christ. Many times you say, oh, what can I do? But if you stay back this afternoon, you realize there's so much that you can do, but you have to stay back to learn how to witness for Christ. This afternoon, we have those three sessions. Health ministry, very active ministry. Our health ministry wants to thank all those who have already registered for the C. PRT training on May 5th, 2024. All you have to do is um, go, you go right on the envelope and put CPR training and the treasurer will know that it is for the session. So please, it's a very important thing. You might be saving your own life. We need this training. Okay. So registration continues. Only $50. Seniors ministry. Again, we come back to the seniors. This is for all seniors. Step the age down again. 
55 plus of Bronx Church and others, our senior ministry is scheduled to resume meeting under the leadership of Sister Joan Caleb. Please mark the date, seniors. Tuesday, May 7th, 2024 at 10 a.m. right here, Bronx Church Fellowship Hall. So we're asking all those interested to please come. They'll be having fun. They'll be going on trips. Um, they have a garden in the back. Uh, so much stuff they'll teach you how to um, prepare a wheel and so many other things they will teach you how to do arts and craft with Sister Brown. And so we're asking you to please come. Women's Ministry, ladies, get your tea hats, your fascinators, and your gloves. Ready to dress for the occasion. It's the Women's Ministry Spring Sprinkle Tea Party on April 28th. It's at noon right here in the Fellowship Hall. So what are you actually asking to do? You want to hear it again? It says noon. Okay, noon. At noon. So what they saying to you ladies, I know you watch televisions a lot of times, and especially in Europe and in Britain, you see the ladies with a little piece of hat on the side, and they have the gloves, and they come walking in, and the man, you know, and sometimes they have a, a little parasol umbrella. So that's what we're going to be having here. So we are inviting you, and not just that, we will be judging to see how well Wanda could put on her hat and walk in, okay? So we'll be judging you on that. So please, we're asking you, um, and it's free, okay? We know we like free stuff. I like it too. Okay, so that's Women's Ministry. At noon next Sunday, the place will be well decorated. Adventurers, our little people, our Golden Envoy Adventure Club wants to thank the families and the members of the Bronx Church who came out, and others, I saw other people out there too, who came out and supported our paint event. A big thank you. Our next event will be a cooking event on May 26, 2024 at 10 a.m. This is for the adventurers to complete their cooking requirements for investiture. So we thank all those that were here last Sabbath. I was here. It was very good, very well attended. And we're asking the parents who have young children to please register your children for the adventurers. They learn a lot. They learn so many things they learn. And we'll be with them forever for life. So please bring your young people. A music ministry. Music ministry. The Sanctuary Choir Director, Dr. Yui Faith, Faith Yui, is asking um, you to meet on the fourth Friday, which is April 26th. Fourth Friday is April 26th at 5 p.m. Choir members, please take note. You're going to have a rehearsal here on the 26th at 5 p.m., not 5.01, 5 p.m. AY Ministry, our active young people, the NEC, Northeastern Conference Soccer League is inviting interested individuals ages 3 to 13 to be a part of this year's soccer season, which starts on May 5th, 2024. This is soccer, I say football. Children ages 3 to 5 will pay $200, and those 6 to 13 will pay $300. Sessions are done on Sundays. Check the flyer on the bulletin board. They are doing this to keep the young people Occupy, so they don't have time to do other things, keep them active, keep them fit, fit, and so we are encouraging them to come and play football in the West End. We call it football. Our AY department will also host, please pay attention, Youth Day, April 27. I think you, you heard them in the back there. They want your support, okay? They want your sister Ropa, your daughter. We're asking her to be here, okay? Please, you gotta be here. So, next Sabbath, the youth. It's Youth Day. I heard them planning about it. They have flyers out. It's very exciting. I saw the flyers. It's very beautiful. And they're asking you to please come and support them. Now, that's just the day. And listen to the theme. Like they're doing evangelism. Seeking the loss. The theme is seeking the loss. And the guest speaker is none other than Kenyan Tobias. He has preached for us before. He has preached several times for us. He's a young man. Very energetic. So please come here. And don't bring yourself... Bring your friends, bring your neighbors to this special event by Tobias. Now, they're on a roll. Later that same day, the program will continue with another session. It's called the Midnight Outcry. <laughs> Not the Midnight Cry, the Midnight Outcry. From 10 p.m. to 12.30 a.m., come and be part of this special worship experience. You have to be here, young people. They don't say, all oh, the folks like me. Can I come? You can come. You 
Okay, all right. So you have to be here. They are making a very good effort. We talk about our young people. Are, now they're doing something. Let us come. No, not now. They have always been doing something. So let us come and support them. The Midnight Outcry. I'll be here with my old voice. Okay, finally, um, from our men's ministry leader, that's um, Pastor and Pastor Elder James Brown and his assistant, um, Pastor Bartley. They want to mark Labor Day on your calendar, not Labor Day Eastern Parkway, but Labor Day Washington. We'll be having a trip to DC. Plan to spend your Labor Day with our men's ministry. Uh, we'll give you some more details, but I'm gonna jump in. They're gonna do um, the, some museums out there and maybe the Bible Museum. So we're asking not just men, but asking you all, but um, Pastor Bartley will give you the rest, but let me conclude. That's it for me. He will just give you more on the men's ministry. Thank you. Just addition to Ella Williams. Um, Brother, Williams. Brother Williams. I want to make just one or two uh, clarification that this trip is not only for the men's ministry. Uh, we are a family. Neither is the trip uh, fundraising. We are a family here at the church, and we are planning a family day. It's a family day we're going out to enjoy ourselves um, at Washington, D.C. Um, the bus can hold 56 passengers. Say it again, the bus can hold 56 passengers. Um, what we have done, we have highlighted 36 seats to adults and 20 seats to children. And uh, your child must be from the age of 12 going down. Over 12, they are counted as an adult. Um, the fare for this trip for an adult is $110 per person and for children is $65. You will be served a continental breakfast on the bus, and uh, lunch is on you. Oh, during this course of this week, I got in touch with the Black African Museum in Washington, and I was able to get you going free. Okay, well, I have two minutes, he said. We're able to enter free. So they will give us free passes, which we can use to go there. I'm trying to get also in touch with the Bible um, Museum and see also if we can get a free trip into the Bible Museum. Also, there is a bus in Washington, that, a shuttle bus, that costs $10 and it takes you around the entire city of Washington and uh, point out um, um, some very strategic points and places and people. So, brothers and sisters, I'm gonna close on this. If you are planning, and I'm hoping that the entire church, please, we need names. We need to start giving your names. Because I do not want at the last moment that we all when run overflow that you come here and cannot get on the bus. If we can go with two buses, fine. But as of this, as of today, see me, Brother Brown, or any mother from the men's ministry, we need names. You can pay all your money in in. In installment. You don't have to bring all of it one time. We can do it in installment. But as of this Sabbath, please, we want names of those who are planning to go on the trip. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Can we all stand?
great God we worship. He's mighty. He's holy. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, come. Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. The church is called to worship. of Jesus, we have come this day to worship. As you tabernacle with us, Lord, we pray that you will lead us in all righteousness as we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. I want to say a special good morning to the saints. And the ain'ts. <laughs> well, we, uh, you ain't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to welcome each one to worship this morning. You came from near, you came from far, but we came for this one thing, to worship. And may the Lord bless us as we worship him in spirit and in truth. I want to say a special welcome to our guests this morning. I have two on the list. Um, Sister Tanya Carmichael, Amen. just wave your hand. Praise the Lord. Glad to have you this morning. A guest of Sister Lorian. Praise the Lord. Amen. We also have Sister um, Vanessa. Is it Rankison or Rankishan? Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Good to have you in the house this morning. And we thank you for accepting the invitations to be present at Bronx Church today. We pray that you both will be specially blessed and receive that special blessing for which you came. I, I, I believe the praise team is going to show some love as they, they welcome you. And while the praise team sings, or while they are coming, is there any other guests that we might have missed? Any other guests that we might have missed? Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's greet at least three persons. Greet at least three persons. It's good to see you.
Thank you so much. And we have a special guest with us this morning. He will be introduced a little later. Amen. Now, today is a special day, an extra special day. I know you might see Brother Williams like he's omnipresent. It's because today is his special day. Um, where we are focused on personal ministries. There is a special symposium that will take place this afternoon, starting at 3, 3.30. All right. Starting at 3.30, we have a special symposium. Um, and Brother Williams, you would have heard a lot about it during the announcement, but I just want to emphasize that we all could and should be present for the symposium this evening. Amen. Amen. Um, Dr. Walton Rose, the Personal Ministries Director of the Northeastern Conference, will be conducting some special, having some special presentations, and we know the Federation, the entire Federation, will be here this afternoon. And we are hoping that all the churches in Bronx, Manhattan, are also here this afternoon for the symposium. So big things are happening. Let's be part of it. Um, Next week, next week, next week. Next week. All right, all right, yes, yes. Uh, next Sabbath is a special day out here. It is a special youth Amen. emphasis Amen. day. I, oh, okay, okay, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have a special guest speaker, Elder Tobias. Kenyon Tobias. Yeah. Oh man, if you if you are a guest today, you got to well next week you're no longer gonna be a guest, but you have to be here next week also. It's a young man who is an elder at the Ephesus Church. He will be your guest speaker and brother, he can throw down. He can raise the roof. <laughs> uh, he got a whole roof and a floor to raise. <laughs> Amen. That will be happening next week for our special Youth Emphasis Day. And then in the evening, our youth are so excited. They were like, Pastor, we can't just do it in the day. There's just so much to do. There are just so many blessings to call down. And so the youth said, Pastor, we're going to do an uh, evening a night program. And so in the evening, there is what is called the midnight cry. It's going to start at 10 p.m. Starting at 10 p.m. next Saturday evening will be the midnight cry, and it will go until half an hour past midnight. <laughs> so let's, let's all plan to be here for that so that we, and I, you know, someone asked last night on the line, is it going to be streamed? And told them, I don't know, but I'm not going to let it miss me. And they say, it's going to be streamed? Uh-oh. I'll be here. <laughs> Amen. I'll be here. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. Amen. Uh, so if you cannot, and only if you absolutely cannot be here, they're gracious enough to stream it for you. But would you prefer people being here? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come where the rain will be falling <laughs> and get wet with and in the spirit. Thank you so much. Am I missing anything that I shouldn't miss? All right. Um, thank you so much. And we continue our worship in the beauty of holiness according to the schedule. Our hymn of praise today will be hymn number 34. Hymn number 34. I invite the congregation to stand.
Wake the song of joy and gladness. Even bring your noblest praise. Banish every thought and sadness. Pouring forth your highest praise. Sing to him whose care has brought us once again with friend to me. And whose loving voice has taught us of the way of Jesus' feet. Wake the song, wake the song, the song of joy and gladness. Wake the song, wake the song, the song of jubilee. Joyfully with songs and banner, we will greet the festal day. Shout aloud, O glad Hosanna, and our gratitude obtain. We will chant our Savior's glory while our thoughts we raise above. Tell and still the whole old story. The song, the song of joy and gladness. Wake the song, wake the song, the song of jubilee. Thanks to thee, O Holy Father, for the mercy of the year. May such heart as here we gather, swell with breath. To since then, thanks to thee, O loving Savior, for redemption through thy blood. Breathe upon us, Holy Spirit, sweetly draw us near to Oh, we press on, we press on, the song of joy and gladness, we press on. Wake the song, the song of Jubilee. Wake the song, wake the song, the song of joy and gladness. Wake the song, wake the song, the song of Jubilee. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to paraphrase this. So there's a scripture in James that says that Abraham was um, obedient and faithful to the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness, and he called him his friend. How many of us believe and have faith in God? Amen. In this praise and worship, we are going to call him our friend.
to be covered under God this morning. This is a day the Lord has made. So we're here to rejoice and be glad in him. I don't know what you've been through all week, but you have come to the right place because God is here in this place. And he said, if we call upon him, my friends, he will hear and answer, and he will show us mighty things that we know nothing about. So what is it that you're calling on God for today? You're sick and you can't get well? Come to the altar. You have a burden? Come to the altar. Your money look funny? Come to the altar. You are stressed out, messed up? Come to the altar. Even with a heart of gratitude, just come. I'm asking you to press closer. You might be standing in the gap for somebody. You might need prayer for yourself, your spouses, your children, whatever, whoever. God can fix it. He can turn it. He can shift it. And he can move your situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, how excellent is your name, the name that is above all name. We thank you for this week. Safely through another week, you have brought us along our way. You have bring us back here on the Sabbath day. We come with our brokenness. We come with our sadness. We come with our hearts full of thanksgiving. We come with gratitude. We come to say thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for putting clothes on our back. Thank you for covering us with a roof over our head. Thank you for keeping us in our right mind. Thank you, God. You have been good to us when we're not even good to ourselves. You are faithful when we are not faithful. So we come to relax in your presence today. Because in your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand is pleasures forevermore. Now we ask you to forgive us where we have sinned and fall short, where we have disobeyed you, where we, whatever we have done to someone else, things that we don't know, we sin in thought, word, and in deed. So we are coming to ask you to cleanse us. Wash us now. Wash us right now, dear God. Take out anything that will hinder these prayers from going up. Somebody's waiting to hear from you, God. Somebody need to hear that you're still God. Somebody need to be reminded that you're still large and in charge. And we just say thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for favor. Thank you for your love that encircles us. Everyone is at the altar this morning. God, they come with their different faces. They come with a different problem, but they come. Broken, but they come. Sad, but they come. Messed up, but they come. We are here, God, to ask you to do something for us. Fix our situation. Turn things around for us. Come by, God. Come by. Somebody's crying on the inside even now with some problem that they're facing. But burdens are lifted at Calvary. You are near. You are very near. Every 
troubled heart you can see. Every heartache and tear, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Our God is near. So bring your burdens. Don't go back with them. Take it home. Bring it and leave it at the foot of the cross. Too many times, dear God, you ask, we ask him to take our burden, but we keep taking it back. Yeah. Now, God, we're going to give it all to you. We're going to let go and let you have your way. Because when we let go, that's when something starts happening. When we let go and let God, you will raise up a hallelujah. We can raise up a hallelujah anyhow. Yeah. Knowing that you're working out everything for our good. So we thank you. Some are waiting for doors to be open. We don't mind if you open the windows and pour out the blessing. So whatever you open, big door, little door, medium door, just open a door, God. You lead and we will follow. If you lead, God, we will follow. So whatever door it is, you can open it. And we have to let go of the handle. God, too many times we ask him to shut the door, but yes, we're holding on to the handle. Help us to just let go. Move out of your way. Step out of your way so you can do your good work in our life. Some have come with burdens for their children. Some are in the fall. Some are not in the fall. Some that once walked with you. But God, we are coming this morning to plead the blood on behalf of all our children. Whether ours or our, our children in the church, they're all our children. The enemy is about to sift them like wheat. But we are going into the enemy's camp and we are plucking them out of his hand. We are, they're coming home. They have wandered far away from home. Some are looking for love in the wrong places. Some are looking for peer pressure. Some are looking to fit in. They're not called to be fit in. They're called to stand up and be counted. Can anything good come out of the brown? Come taste and see what you can do. So we're going to pray for our children. We're going to tarry for them. Those who have strayed away, bring them back home. Whatever they're doing out there, God, trouble their spirit. Trouble them so they will come home like the prodigal son. They, will, they have wandered far away, but they're coming back. And when they come back, our hands are going to be open. Welcome home. What take you so long? Welcome home. And we're going to love them anyhow. Some are seeking for jobs. And God, you know it's difficult. It is so difficult in this time when you're not working. So I pray, God, you just provide a job for them that they could get the Sabbath off and they could be faithful in giving the tithes and offering. Amen. They could be part of the giving. In the meantime, dear God, some are wondering, worrying, stressing, fretting, confused that the devil have them all mixed up. But let us not focus on the enemy. Let us focus on the God who can help us. Let us tell the God about our mountains and show them, tell the mountains about our God. Because you're bigger than anything. Cancer has taken over, but you're bigger than cancer. The stripes on your back make you bigger. You're bigger. Your love can, is bigger than anything else that we are facing. And everything that we are facing, God, we are going to face it with hope, with expectancy, with assurance that you're still God. You're still in charge. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Sometimes we're so low that low is looking down at us. But even when we are low down, dear God, you're up to something. And you're always working things out. All things are not good, but they will work out for our good. And we say thank you. Bless the Bronx Church. Be with Pastor George in a special way. Cover him, a young man on fire for the Lord. Cover him. Be a hedge of protection around. He's going out and he's coming in. Be with all the elders and officers and members. I pray, dear God, you help us to keep united. Because united together we can stand. I pray for every sister and every brother that when we come together and we pray and we bind that old devil, we'll be a force to be reckoned with. We cannot be our other, uh, other keeper. We cannot go against each other. We have to work together. That that's how the work is going to go. Working together, united we will stand. The enemy will tremble when he sees us united together. Division is from the devil. And I pray, God of heaven, you draw us closer to you as we get closer to each other. Amen. For every married couple, I pray that you be the glue that can hold them together, especially in a time like this. Because the enemy job is to destroy, kill, steal, and destroy. But we thank God 
that you have blessed and ordained marriage. So come with me, then we work things out. Then we talk things out. Then we work together. Then we'll not go to bed angry. Then we hold on to each other. Then we pray for each other. Even if they're upset, they still cover their spouses. May every man build a family altar in their home so they will leave their family. Let every woman be submissive. Let their hands find good things to do. Let them be the perverse 31 woman that the children will rise up and call them blessed. And their husbands too. For every single person under the sound of my voice. If they seek you first, your kingdom and your righteousness, all things, all things will be added. Prepare them for kingdom business. So everybody's not going to get married. But if it's your will that you have a spouse for them, I pray that God they keep the body under submission of the Holy Spirit. They will wait on you. They will just wait, pray and wait, watch and pray. Work for you in the meantime. Don't be looking because when we look, we pick up all kind of mess. We pick up zero instead of hero. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that they will wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, just wait. Work, for God is working. Wait, for God is working. Trust, for God is working. Amen. And we just want to thank you. For our little babies, I cover them. Every parent that have a child in school, they might not know where the money coming from, but you have provided before, and you will continue to do it again. For every baby, may we bring them up in the fear of the Lord. Teach them right from wrong, and show them the way. Who will tell them if we don't tell them? Who will show them that there is a better way? Who will tell them that Jesus loves them? Now you have chosen a man for today by the name of Dr. Walter Rose. And he's coming with a message for all of us today. I pray, Holy Spirit, that the words that come out of his mouth will not come from you, will not come from him, but straight from you. And as he speaks to us, that we'll be receptive to hear what thus say the Lord. We will not just keep it, and we'll not just say it's a good sermon. We'll apply it and just do. We will go and make disciples. We'll go and tell somebody about every, tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Our job is to go. So we ask you, dear God, just have thine own way. Stamp your approval on this service today. Have thine own way. And speak to our hearts today. And let God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
if you say amen again. I say Rockland West is in the house. Sister Nelson, let's give us a wave. That's Sister Nelson, Sister Ferguson's sister, by the way. I want to welcome all of us today. Now, today we are ex uh, experiencing not only re spiritual renewal, but we are reminded that spiritual renewal also involves giving to the Lord. It was Jesus who said, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. At this time, our deacons will wait upon us for the Lord's tithes and offerings. We would like to express our gratitude on behalf of the pastor for what we have been able to do so far. We have been able to restore our boiler. It does take dollars and cents. So keep on giving. You know, the only time we should stop giving is when we are unable to give. And while we are able to enjoy God's sunshine and the rain and everything, remember that all good things come from heaven above with whom there is no shadow of turning. The Lord says, that when we give, we should not do so grudgingly, or for necessity, because we are, as it were, coerced. We should give lovingly and willingly, because the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. It is this fact in mind that Jesus reminds us the story, told us the story about a man who had advanced materially. He had acquired land and he was able to produce. Then he says, soul, I'll make provision for many years. But, and because he was talking about extending his bond and stuff. But the Lord said to him, the Lord said, Jesus said, thou fool, this night shall your soul be required of you. And all that you have acquired, you have left it. We are also told that your fool and his money are what? Soon to part. May God bless us as we continue to give. When we talk about personal ministries, we're thinking about putting our hands in our pockets sometimes, or in our wallets, and to make provision that we did not even plan for. But the same God who led the children of Israel in the wilderness and fed them, the same God today, and at the same God who brought us to 1695 Washington Avenue today, he knows our future, and he will make provision for tomorrow's needs. We want to thank all those who have come today, and when you come, not only to give of financially, but to let your minds be focused on him, because we have been told that will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Let us also remember that the Lord told us the Lord has acquired us not only by our redemption financially, but the blood who was shed that was shed on Calvary. And that blood will never lose its power. We also remember that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. That means I am involved too. Amen. But I belong to the Lord. Jesus also says that when we give, we should remember that the more blessed, it is more blessed to give than to receive. As the, uh, we say, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse and prove me now, said the Lord, for I open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive it because we shall be a delightsome land. Let us pray. Our Father, we do thank you for what you have allowed us to acquire and also allowed us to have the spirit of giving. Help us to remember that the greatest giver is recorded in John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that those who believe it in him should not perish. Bless us for what we have been given and what we are about to receive as a blessing. 
And when you shall come in your kingdom, we have a home with you, because we ask all these mercies with thanksgiving, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, as all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Please let us stand for our scripture reading. We will be reading responsively. Psalms 34, 1 to 8. When you have it, say amen. We will be reading responsively. Psalms 34, 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exhort his name together. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces was not ashamed. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Then see that the Lord is good, blesses the man who trusts in him. May the Lord add a blessing to us, may we be doers of the word and not just hearers. Please be seated. Praise the Lord, the season has come for the word, but we want to give you an introduction to the speaker and present him to others. Today we have with us Dr. Walton Rose Sr. Dr. Rose grew up here in the Bronx. In fact, I'm told that this was his home church for a time. So he's no stranger to the longtime Bronx members. Uh, Dr. Rose, he is a veteran of preaching the word of God. And his work includes a plethora of duties, building leadership strategies, equipping disciples and providing guidance and counseling to his congregants' felt needs. Dr. Rose grew up here in the Bronx, New York, and has conducted numerous evangelistic crusades, workshops, and seminars nationally and internationally. Amen. Through his book entitled, Each One Reach One, and the Spoken Word, he has baptized thousands and have drawn many to the concept of discipleship. Dr. Rose attended Atlantic Union College where he received his Bachelor's of Arts in Theology. Then he went to the Seventh-day Adventist Seminary, Theological Seminary, which is located an, an, at Andrews University. And there he received a Master's of Divinity degree and subsequently achieved his Doctor of Ministry degree. In addition, he completed clinical pastoral education training at Columbia University in psychotherapy and pastoral supervision and is a certified chaplain. He is the former ministerial secretary of the Northeastern Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. He is currently the personal ministries director for the Northeastern Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Dr. Rose is married to Rose 
rose. <laughs> An educational leader, and together they have five children, Renee, Walton Jr., and Romeo, Janelle, and Alexis, and three grandchildren. Dr. Rose, pri his primary goal and objective is to see others come to a saving relationship and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He empowers all to obey the great commission of Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Go, teach, baptize, and make disciples of man. You've heard the introduction He's also my colleague in ministry. Amen. Amen. And after our special music, we will hear from Dr. Rose. But before that, we want to invite our Federation officers to come forward and do their thing. <laughs> Amen. Okay, um, all our Federation um, officers and members who are here, we see um, we have um, Marvett representing Rock West, also Sister Gray, who is also the prayer coordinator for the entire Northeastern Conference Federation, having a session here in June. And so we have um, Sister Yvette, who is from Mount of Blessing. We all know her, Mount of Blessing. And um, she's uh, one of the vice presidents of the Bronx Manhattan Federation. Also, we have Sister Brim. She's, an ex she's up there, vice president to the president. But we all work under and with um, Dr. Walton Rose, all of us here. We have other members in our congregation here of the local Sister Jackson, um, Elder Joseph. Uh, I don't want to miss anybody. Elder Brown is one of our parliamentarians. Yeah, okay. So on behalf of all the churches, in Bronx area and of the Federation, not just the local, but the total Federation, we want to present Dr. Rose, should be up here already, because pastor is not receiving it. We give pastor love every day, okay? Every day he gets love from us. Amen. So, thank you. So we want to present this to Dr. Pastor Rose for taking the time off to be here and selecting of all the churches, the Brown Seventh-day Adventist Church, to have the symposium. So here we are. I'll have to carry it down for you. It's heavy. Okay, so can you give the... Okay. Thank you. Hold on picture. Let's send the picture. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to the Federation for such a surprising gift. I just thank God for the Federation and the work that they are doing all over the Northeastern Conference. They have been inspirational. They have helped us in making sure that all of our churches are on targets, reaching not only church members, but also reaching the community with the word of God. I thank each and every one of you for what you're doing because what you're doing cannot be measured in time, but will be measured in eternity when Jesus shall come.
like the sound of many waters. It's the sound of worship coming from your throne. There are cries of adoration as men from every nation lift their voice to make your glory known. Singing Holy, Holy, Holy are you Lord. Holy, Holy, Holy are you Lord. The others and angels bow I think we ought to give him another hearty amen. Holy, holy, holy is our God. I don't know about you today, but I came to praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Ah, uh, you don't even sound like it. Isn't God good? All the time, God is good. We thank him for his mercy, for his grace, for his loving kindness to each and every one of us. We ought to give him the praise. I'm so glad that he woke us up this morning. So many people did not wake up, but he came by. We are in his favor. I first want to thank your stellar pastor, Pastor George, for inviting me to come and to be here with you today. We had several conversations and also your personal ministries director, Brother Williams, for being so kind and his uh, warm welcome. And I just thank God for being here today. I'm, I'm glad to be back here at home. You didn't hear what I said. Every time I, I do come here, I, I think of years ago. Um, here um, with um, Elder James Brown. 
Come on, man. Uh, Elder, Elder Brown used to, used to keep us in order. Yeah, I tell you, he was, he was something else. Uh, you know, you, in those days, you couldn't chew gum in church. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. You couldn't chew gum in church. Matter of fact, they will pat you down at the door. I, I did, you know, but, but God has, has been good. I, I, I think of, um, I remember the, the, um, the podium used to be different. Sister Nemhard used to be right there. I used to see her, and Sister Nichols right over there playing the organ. I saw, I still see different individuals because in Bronx Church, we had a place to sit. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. We just didn't sit all over the place. We could tell where families were and where they used to sit. There was a time. But I'm so glad that God has brought us from a mighty long way. And we thank God for you today. We encourage you to keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. He has been merciful. He has been good to us. Just want to, as a reminder, this afternoon at 3.30, 4 o'clock, we'll be having a personal ministry symposium. Um, we'll be having seminars, three seminars, matter of fact, on retention. We're going to talk about small group ministries. We're going to talk about total membership involvement. We're going to, there are questions and answers that uh, will be posed at that time. And we're hoping that each one of you here, I believe lunch has been, yes, lunch is served. And so we, you don't need to go anywhere. There are going to be others that are going to be joining us, so I ask that you spend the entire day with us. When we talk about witnessing, let me tell you that a lot of us think that it's all about saving somebody else. No, it's about saving you. You want to be saved in God's kingdom? You have to be review, re renewed, revived, rejuvenated, reanimated so that the Holy Spirit might take full and complete control of your life. So may God bless you today. May God bless us as we continue to lift up and magnify the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Our Father, our God, our Savior, and our Redeemer, nothing in my hands I bring but simply to the cross I cling today. Now, Lord, pace my passion, temper my temperament, and order my steps in your word, not because I'm worthy, but because Jesus is worthy. And may the words of my mouth and meditation of every heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer, we pray. Let everyone say... Amen. I would invite you to turn with me to Mark chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 5. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Would you stand with me as we read the word of God? Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. I'll read in your hearing. And again... He entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw, their faith. He said unto them, sick of the palsy, son, 
thy sins be forgiven thee. I want to speak to you on the subject, a collaborative faith. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. A collaborative faith. Henry Ford, one of America's greatest automakers, once said to his employees, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. But working together is success. When Jesus was here on earth, one of his major objectives was to teach his disciples how to band together, stay together, pray together, witness together, and work together for the salvation of souls. Jesus recognized that the story of redemption would be incomplete without cooperation and collaboration between divinity and humanity. That's why in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8 it says, And being found, Jesus, being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Someone once said that in order for us to unite with Christ in spreading the gospel, we must do more than participate. Do more than help. Do more than practice. Do more than be fair, be just. Do more than forgive, forget. Do more than dream and work. Because God is able to do more than we ask or think according to his power that worketh in us. In Mark chapter 5, 2, verses 1 through 5, we see Jesus entering his headquarters in Capernaum. It was noise abroad by the people that he was in the house down the street. The Bible says that the crowd was so great that there was no room to get into the house. Now I must point out here from the outset that it was Jesus that drew the crowd. It wasn't social media. It wasn't Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or podcast, or some food or clothes distribution. It was all because Jesus was in the house. Uh, my friends, we too must realize that when people come to church, they did not come to see you, but they came to see Jesus. That's why in John 12, 32, it says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men, not some men, all men unto me. We must clearly understand that redemption and salvation is not produced by us, but is a result of knowing the man, Christ Jesus. For we did not find Jesus, but it was Jesus that found us and brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. There are some people who said that they found Jesus. They found the church. You didn't find anything. If it was up to you to find Jesus, you will never find him. If you say that I found Jesus, that means you just found a club. You just found a click. That's what you found. But when you find Jesus, he will bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
It was not because of our wealth or good health or education or social classification that we are drawn to Jesus. But it's simply because of Jesus' love, his mercy, and his grace. My friends, the only way that our community is going to know that Jesus is in the house is by telling them that Jesus can open up that which is closed, wash up that which is unclean, fill up that which is empty, build up that which is feeble, lift up that which is fallen, clean up that which is which is corrupt, cheer up that which is sad, and pick up that which is broken. What an awesome God we serve. In our text, we see four men who had a sick friend. Do you know somebody who is really sick? Days, so many people suffering from cancer, dropping dead right in front of our eyes. But these four men knew they had a sick friend. Now, many times when the Bible look at sickness, uh, it's not just physical sickness. You can be sick emotionally and mentally. He was sick. And these four men wanted to do something about it. When they heard that Jesus was nearby, they placed their friend, a paralytic, on a bed to get him to Jesus. However, when they arrived, the crowds were so great in the house that it prevented them from seeing Jesus. My friends, do you know that we too can prevent others from seeing Jesus. For oftentimes, the way that we conduct our lives can either spread the goodness of grace of Christ to others or drive them away from him. Frederick the Great once said, the more I get to know people, the more I love my dog. When you, when, when you think about it, dogs are pretty real creatures. What you see is what you get. My friends, that's what a dying world is looking for. It's looking for authenticity. He's looking for genuineness and sincerity. If we want to bring people to a saving knowledge of Christ, we must not only talk the talk, but we need to walk the talk. Those four men, in order to bring their friend to Jesus, had to face several obstacles. My friends, any time, any time, you try to help somebody, you're going to run into rejection, objection, and opposition. But as a child of God, you must realize that every setback is a setup for a comeback. Amen. The first obstacle these men face was their friend couldn't physically move and they had to transport him from place to place. They were his caregivers and were willing to do anything to help their friend. These four men were some good friends. Church, it's hard today to find a good friend. Some say that they will stick with you through the thick and the thin, but in the thick of thin things, they start thinning out. So his friends, I'm talking about true friends, got a bed 
and carried him to a house where Jesus was preaching. And since they couldn't get in through the door, they came up with the idea of climbing the outside stairs off the, to the roof with their sick friend in tow. Once on the roof, they had to pull up tiles, move stones, cut branches, and raise the roof in order that they could tower their paralytic friend into the presence of Jesus. I must point out here that tearing up off the roof is symbolic of getting rid of any obstacle that would hinder others from getting to Jesus. I wonder today if you would be as committed to getting your neighbors, getting your co-workers, Getting your family. That's right in your house. Some of y'all have folks right now in your home that you have not brought to Jesus. Would you be as committed? Or do we give up and quit when the road is rough and the going gets tough and the hills are hard to climb? I know that it's never easy helping people today for people all so fickle and ungrateful unpredictable unreliable unappreciative vindictive and recalcitrant and sometimes you feel like giving up but Jesus says that we are to help them anyway in other words, keep on doing good when others stop. Keep on working when others criticize. Keep on praying when others won't. Keep on building when others interrupt. Keep on witnessing when others laugh. Keep on believing when others doubt. Keep on loving when others hate, for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In verse 4, the paralytic four friends lowered him down to Jesus. When Jesus saw the four men struggling, with the rope tied to each corner of the stretcher. Looking up at them, he saw their faith. I want you to notice that they had a collaborative faith that could be seen. Their bold determination, determined action to bring their friend to Jesus proved that they had real faith. My friends, can it be said of us today that others can see our faith? In other words, a bottled up faith, a concealed faith, a hidden faith cannot be seen by others. A lot of people use the church as a hideout. <laughs> praying that God would somehow come and just take them to heaven. But I'm here to spoil the party. God is not just going to take you to heaven. God is coming for the entire world. Amen. And it's our jobs to go ahead and spread the gospel like the, like the leaves of autumn. We need to have faith for more than our own needs. Out, but also have faith that Jesus can and will meet the needs of others and whom we have brought to Jesus. Jesus said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Can you imagine how the friends felt? They went through a lot of trouble to see their friend healed of the paralysis and now Jesus only wants to forgive his sins. In my mind's eye, I 
I can imagine them shouting, no, no, Jesus, he's paralyzed. We want him to walk, not to be forgiven. Yet Jesus knew what the man's real needs was. In Ministry of Healing, page 77, Ellen White wrote, the paralytic found in Christ's healing for both soul and the body. He needed health of soul before he could appreciate the health of the body. In other words, forgiveness comes before healing. Continuing, she says, before the physical malady could be healed, Christ must bring relief to the mind and cleanse the soul from sin. This lesson should not be overlooked, end of quote. This tells me that whatever problem or difficulties we find ourselves in, almost always it begins from within. Oh, Lord. A lot of us want to blame other people for our problems. But the real enemy is enemy. That's the real enemy. And we have got, we need the forensic righteousness. Of Jesus Christ to come in and share his imparted righteousness and imparted righteousness with us in our lives and cleanse us from sin. That's why David says in Psalm 51 and verse 10, create within me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit. That's what we need. A lot of us want houses and lands. We want rubies and pearls. We want everything in this world. But what we truly need, it's within we need. Create within me, God. So that I can be able to love my neighbor. I'll be able to cooperate in the church and to work for the Lord and to band together and stay together and pray together and work together for the salvation of souls. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. When Jesus said, son, thy sins are forgiven, he did not mean that the paralytic man was especially sinful or that his paralysis was directly caused by sin. Instead, he was addressing the man's greatest need and which is the root of all pain and suffering. And that is the man's need of divine forgiveness. A lot of us talk about forgiving ourselves. But what we really need is divine forgiveness. Because without divine forgiveness, we can't forgive ourselves and we can't forgive our brothers and sisters in Christ. My friends, forgiveness is the greatest miracle that Jesus ever performed. For it meets our greatest needs, costs the greatest price and brings the greatest blessings. The scribes and Pharisees who were seated in the house started to complain. You know, we always have complainers. No matter what you do, somebody going to complain. So there they go sitting in the house, sitting in the church. Help me, Holy Ghost. We just have probably just had communion and they still complaining. <laughs> complaining, saying that this man blasphemes and saying that this, that this man's sin are forgiven for only God can forgive sins. You will notice Jesus didn't disagree with the principle that God alone can forgive sins. However, Jesus wanted the scribes and the Pharisees to realize that both divine forgiveness and the power to heal are impossible with man 
but both are possible with God. A salient principle that we need to learn is that when we are faced with any difficult, situ difficult situation, they are manageable only when we have faith in our Heavenly Father. For faith can move mountains. Faith can open the fountain. Faith can help you succeed. Faith can supply your every need. Where is your faith in God? There are three things that we need to learn from this narrative. Firstly, in order to spread and share the word of God, we must have a persevering faith. When the four men brought their friend on the stretcher, there was no stopping them. <laughs> when they came... To an obstacle, none of them said to the, that the crowd is too cumbersome or let us turn back. Instead, they kept on going. Jesus applauded this type of persevering faith. In Matthew 11 and verse 12, in the clear word Bible, it says this. Beginning with John's ministry, the good news of the kingdom began to bring about opposition. But the spiritually courageous will see the kingdom anyway. My friends, those who are seeking to win souls for Christ must be, must be courageous and be willing to never give up because they are standing on the unshakable foundation of the word of God. So no matter what comes our way, you can survive the darkest night, undergo the hardest trial, defeat the stubbornest doubt, climb the highest mountain, sail the roughest sea, stand the poorest of circumstances, and you can claim the hardest of victories because we know something. We know that all things Work together for good. Everything that happens in your life works together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Secondly, in order to bring others to Jesus, maybe we must be willing to take a risk. This idea of going through the roof to get to Jesus could not have happened if the men did not have some holy boldness. They risk being mocked, rejected, laughed at, stoned, ridiculed, hated, and misunderstood. But when you are passionate, that one thing the church is lacking today is passion. I remember years ago, the church, when you used to talk about the coming of Jesus, people used to jump up out of their seats. Jesus is coming in getting there. We lack passion today. Some of us don't even want to open our mouths and say amen. We got so sedity diddy. We got now, we got things. Before you had one suit, now you got three suits, so you're bad now. You got a car now. You see, some of us, some of us come from the West Indies. I wish I had somebody in here. In the West Indies, you didn't have nothing. You were there looking to come to America. You did everything in your power to come to America but when you went to church whatever island you were you used to open up your mouth and say hallelujah so hallelujah thank you Jesus and soon as you hit America all of a sudden you're shut up We need, no matter where we are, we ought to give God the glory. I wish I had somebody in here who could stand to their feet and give God some glory because he's deserving of our praise. 
He's been good to us. Better to us than we've been to ourselves. He loves us. And therefore, he is expecting us to share this good news of salvation with somebody else. Undoubtedly, in the crowd, there were others. But others who were in the crowd who had loved ones who were sick and needed Jesus and probably seeing these four men succeed said, why didn't I think of that? Their problem is that they did not believe and had the right attitude. As a Christian Seventh-day Adventist, you, you ain't no Seventh-day Adventist. First, you are a Christian. Uh, we're a Christian who believes in the second coming of Jesus, who believes in the commandments of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, but you're a Christian. Christian don't behave just anyhow. Christian don't get up and start yelling and screaming and then trying and fighting for position. A Christian is one who is humble, who loves the Lord and willing to work with everybody. Work with the pastor, work with the elder, work with the PM director, work together. Christ is not divided. One Lord, one faith. One baptism, in other words, they had the right attitude and love as much. We need to have it just like these four men. These four men knew how to work with each other. There were no big eyes and little use. They were not concerned about who will get the shine, who will get the credit. And who wasn't? They weren't concerned who was in front of the stretcher and who was behind. They didn't care about how the stretcher, how it might be weighed down on somebody else and the other one have the light. They didn't care about nothing like that. That's why in Mark 10, 44, it says, And whosoever of you will be the chief shall be the servant if you want to be the head and The agent I see. Oh, you didn't get it yet. If you want to be that, then you've got to be the servant of all. An unknown author wrote, love is an attitude. Love is a prayer. For a soul in sorrow, a heart in despair. Love is good wishes for the gain of another. Love suffers long with the faults of a brother. Love gives water to a cup that runs dry. Love reaches low as it can reach high. Seek not our own at the expense of another. Love reaches God when it reaches a brother. Thirdly. Helping others in need is the priority of the Christian. When these four men brought their sick friend to Jesus, they had to refocus their priorities. In other words, there's some things that we've got to let go in order for God to work in our lives. Maybe it's watching television all the time. Let it go. Maybe it's being on your cell phone. You know, it's very interesting, the cell phone. Uh, one of my sons, he was about 30. I was sitting down with him in the living room. And we were watching a show together. And then I looked at my phone and I saw that I had a message popped up. So when, 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 I, when I looked at my phone... I realized that he says, hey, dad, I just want to ask you this. He was sitting right next to me. I looked at him. I said, why don't you just tell me? I'm right here next to you. You see how people are today that they won't even want to communicate. In 
in this generation of texting. You see, we have got to learn to place the needs of others above the things of this world. As a result of their caring and compassion for their friend, these four, four men, Jesus said to the paralytic, Son, thy sins are forgiven. Take up your mat or your bed and walk. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't die for things. He died for people. Amen. His blood still has power. Today to cleanse us from our sin. His blood is still efficacious. His blood can change lives and change minds and change motives. His blood can change you today. Uh, the songwriter says, what can wash away my sin? Not psychotherapy. What can, not counseling. What? can wash away not all of these things that we are talking not pills what can wash away my sins nothing but the blood of Jesus uh, I don't know about you but if I can help somebody as I pass along if I can cheer Cheer somebody with a word or song. If I can show somebody that they're traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Today, Jesus is saying to you, as he did to the paralytic, arise and take up your bed and walk. The bed is whatsoever have been your comfort zone. The bed is whatsoever is making your present bad situation comfortable. The bed is whatsoever you have been using as an excuse for not witnessing for Christ. The bed is whatsoever have kept you chained down to mediocrity. It is whatever symbolizes your handicap or shame. Jesus is speaking to somebody here today. He's telling you to change your modus operandi and make evangelism number one priority. Change your judgmental spirit and love people how Christ loved them. Change those outdated traditions and rituals and ask God for a greater understanding of his purpose for your life. My friends, we too should exercise a collaborative faith and allow nothing I said nothing to keep us from receiving our blessing our breakthrough your miracle your anointing I need somebody here today that will be able to rise up and to take up your bed and walk take up your life and live Take up your bags and go. Take up your burdens and believe. Take up your money and spend it for God. Take up your pen and write about God's goodness. Take up your Bibles and read it. Take up your sorrows and sing. Take up your disappointments and dance. Take up your loneliness and laugh. Take up your problems and praise him. Amen. Praise him. My brothers and sisters, because God has forgiven us of our sins, we should be willing to praise him and to show him some gratitude. We should tell somebody of his goodness on our jobs, in our neighborhoods, in the community, at our workplaces. We should never back down from a chance to say to a dying world, thank you, Lord, for taking my bitterness and turning it into sweetness, sadness, giving me joy, loneliness, and giving me companionship, empty.
emptiness and given me fulfillment. Failure and turning it into victory. Discouragement and giving me encouragement. More than you ought, we ought to thank the Lord for saving your soul. I don't know about you. But every now and then, I want to tell somebody that I serve a mighty God, an awesome God. I want to tell somebody that Jesus carried his cross for me. I want to tell somebody that he died on Calvary. I want to tell somebody that Sunday morning, uh, he rose, uh, he rose, uh, he rose from the dead. I want to tell somebody that one day, uh, I said one day, soon and very soon, uh, the last problem will be solved, uh, the last question will be answered, the last trouble will have been encountered, uh, the last grave would have been dug, uh, the last night would have been endured. Soon and very soon, uh, the last trial would have been endured. The last hunger would be satisfied. The last thirst would have been quenched. Uh, soon and very soon, uh, the last fear would have been faced. Uh, the last trumpet would have been sound. Uh, the last page would have been written. Soon uh, and very soon, uh, oh Lord, I don't know about you, uh, but we need to give him a... Uh, Give him, give him, give him the glory. The hymnology says, the hymnology says, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, Lord, I want to be in that number or oh, when the saints go march marching in or oh, when Gabriel blows his golden horn or oh, when blows J Gabriel blows his golden horn Lord, I want to be in that number when Gabriel blows his gold, then on. Oh, when they crown him, Lord of all. Come on, stand with me. Oh, when they crown. saints when the saints go marching in there'll be no starless crown it's because we have collaborated with the Holy Ghost we had our robes washed in the blood of the Lamb. Today, God is calling. It's a call to action. 
We're tired of just being mediocre. Complacent. We're tired of procrastinating. When the mission and the commission, the divine mandate had been given to us to go into all the world. Go into your community. Go to your neighbor. Co-worker. Go to your school yeah. and tell others of the love of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you can't say a word, it's by your attitude, yeah. 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 by a smile. Yeah. That when they look upon you, they might not even see you. They may see Jesus yeah. and inquire, why are you like that? In the midst of problems. But you can still smile in the midst of a storm. There's something about a child of God. You know about a child of God. We need to ask God to help us to get the devil out of us. So that we might walk by faith and not by sight. Today, 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 today. Not tomorrow. A lot of us talking about tomorrow. A lot of us talking in this church from a little boy out hearing folks talk about the second coming of Christ. He's coming. And some said that I'm going to wait until the Sunday blue laws. I'm going to wait until the government does something. I'm going to wait until Trump does something crazy. Then Jesus will come. But I'm here to tell you that if you die today, that's Jesus' second coming. Because you're going to have to look up and wake up. Whether in the first or the second resurrection. But hopefully it's in the first. You're going to look at Jesus. And Jesus is going to ask you a question. What have you done to the least? The least of these, you have done it unto me. Oh, friend of mine, today if you hear my voice, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. I'm just going to ask those who are willing today to say, Lord, I'm going to make a commitment from this day going forward to follow you. I invite you to come down front. I want to pray for you. That's all I want to do. God, I believe there's power in prayer. Come out of your seats. Get on up. Nobody here can save you. The elder can't save you. The pastor can't save you. I can't save you. Holy Jesus. Come on. Stand up for Jesus. Don't look at your neighbor. You don't need to look at nobody. Or watch who's coming. This is a personal thing between you and God. So come. Just want to pray with you that God would move in your life in a signal way. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Excuse me. Hear, hear my, sorry. Mm. Pass, pa pa wait, hold on, hold on. Pass, follow me. Me not, oh, oh gentle, gentle Savior. Hear my, hear my, my
right now, right now. We don't want God to pass us by. There might be others in the audience. If you can't, if you can't come up here, you need to stand. Stand where you are. At this very moment, God is reaching out to you. Humanity touching divinity. Just one touch, just like that woman with the issue of blood. If I could just, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Right now, right now, we're touching it. If you need healing, touch it. You need forgiveness, touch him. You need a hard regulator, touch him. Your children have gone astray, touch him. Your marriage is not what it ought to be, but you came to church anyhow, touch him. He can make a change. Right now your finances is upside down, touch him. He can do it for you. We just need to give him a chance. He's not going to break down the door. He says, he says, behold, I come. I'm knocking. He's not going to kick the door in. And if you love him, let him in right now. Into your heart. Into your mind. Into your home. On your job. Allow him to come in right now. Father, God in heaven as we bow, we recognize if ever we needed you. We sure do need you now. Lord, we might come with beautiful hats and beautiful suits and nice shoes, but Lord, there's only one man that can cleanse the soul from sin. His name is Jesus. I pray for these who have come, Lord. Up front, you know everyone's need. You know everyone's struggle. You know, but I'm so glad that there's somebody who knows about our problems and our difficulties. For you were touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So now, Lord, perform, perform, perform a miracle of grace. Turn us around. May we become effective, reproducing witnesses for you now. Anoint us with the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, come in this place. Holy Spirit, grace us today. May we never be the same because we have now become new creatures, a new creation because of your power. So, Lord, as we collaborate, as we work with you, as we band together with each other, I pray, oh, Father, that your kingdom might become a reality now and also in the days ahead for you to come. We thank you. We praise you. We just want to say hallelujah. We just want to say praise the Lord. We want to say thank you, Jesus, for you have been a good God to each one of us. We ask these favors, we ask these mercies in no other name, but in the merciful name, the wonderful name, the sweet name, the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus we pray. Let everyone say amen and amen. May God bless you. May God bless you. Love and Savior, won't you hear my humble cry? Ooh, I, and others I
Praise the Lord. Truly, our baskets have been filled. And we're leaving this place rejoicing. God bless you, Dr. Rose, as you remind us that there is no other name like the name of Jesus. Our closing hymn will be the hymn number 340. We have heard the joyful sound, Jesus save, Jesus save. I invite the congregation to stand. I've heard the joyful sound. Jesus save, Jesus save. Spread the gladness all around. Jesus save, Jesus save. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steep and cross the waves. Onward tears, our Lord's command. Jesus save, Jesus save. Wafted down the rolling tide, Jesus save, Jesus save. Tell to see as far and wide, Jesus save, Jesus save. Sing the island of the sea, echo back. Ocean caves, earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing about the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and in this life, Jesus saves. Jesus name, sing his song, sing through the gloom, when the heart of mercy pays, sing it shout, yeah, for the tomb. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, so shall they, shall full and free, highest hills and deepest came, this our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all. Now and forevermore, let God's people say, amen. let God's people say, amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. Yes.